Greetings, everybody. Welcome to the October 14th, 2015 edition of the Midweek Update here on Wrestling with Redbeard. In case you haven't heard, Steve Springer has retired. If only we could get Vince McMahon to do the same thing. Number five story of the week is that Russell Force has announced the majority of the card for the 2015 edition of Survival Games. Survival Games is, if you're not aware, a four-on-four style contest that Russell Force has debuted here a few years ago um, to where they have uh, essentially elimination rules. It's four-on-four, as we mentioned. You can wind up with four-on-one, two-on-two, three-on-one, any variation thereof. And they're going to have two matches that will be contested under those particular rules this time around. The, I believe the main event will be Team Skyler versus Team Stevens. And then there will also be Team Killer versus the END, which is the Equal Nation demonstration, if you've never heard of them before. Um, also on the card, you'll have a no hold bar match between Jackson James and the Salem Center Six, and a uh, special attraction contest involving Mad Dog, Josh Powers, and Billy Brash. That should be an excellent contest there because those are two fine workers. Um, they have always been at the top of their game, in particular here recently, is uh, the young man Josh Powers, as he's coming off not only wins against uh, Matt Hardy, but also a number of other top stars, including the Barbarian, so he's been on a real roll here recently. But uh, Survival Games as a whole has been one of Russell Force's better shows, uh, historically speaking. They bring in a lot of talent, um, for example, here in the... Uh, event this particular year you're going to have not only Chase Stevens but uh, Cedric Alexander, um, Adam Page and Corey Hollis, John Schuyler, um, a lot of big names around the uh, independent scene here in the southeast will be attracted to that show so uh, definitely be a top-notch program and worth your time to come check out. It'll be happening November 1st from the Spire Recreation Center in Casey, South Carolina. Number four story of the week is that CM Punk claims the Susan G. Komen Foundation is a scam. This is a uh, bit of a, an odd story here, I'll go ahead and say, because of the fact that it's a guy like CM Punk is essentially attacking a charity foundation that uh, admittedly has had a few questions raised about its spending in the past, but that uh, is certainly doing a lot of good things. Um, Punk, if you weren't aware, made a few comments on Twitter that corresponded to the timing of which um, WWE had come out announcing their annual participation in breast cancer awareness um, and fundraising events thereof. They have aligned themselves with Susan G. Coleman, which if you're unaware, is a foundation geared specifically towards funding research and various other awareness type of campaigns regarding breast cancer. Um, the fact that Punk came out with his comments when he did was what really made a lot of fans suspect because he came out um, and said this about a week and a half ago. Um, the day that Monday Night Raw was going to be taped and also the day that they were going to announce their participation in this year's events. Um, you have to wonder what in the world is going on in his mind, to be honest with you. I know Punk has never been one to um, hold his tongue when it comes to his opinions, but this is just one of those things where it kind of, it kind of hurts you because as a, someone who's been a supporter of his and someone who's been a fan of his for a long time, it's like, you know, this is sort of territory that you should leave alone, to be honest with you. And Susan G. Coleman has been brought under fire before for some of their spending tactics and the fact that they've got executives that make in the six-figure range. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. You, know, you can't have a organization these days that doesn't have some type of leadership at the top. And when people are donating as much money as they are, you know, it takes spending to get someone who's qualified to organize that type of thing. So it is what it is. Um, and Punk is who he is. Unfortunately, it seems as though he's gotten a bit of an injury here recently as well, so we may not see him in a UFC ring in quite some time, but uh, still, hopefully he can learn to maybe watch his mouth a little bit. Yeah, that'll happen. Number three story of the week is that Global Force Wrestling has released what would essentially be considered a teaser trailer for their Amped show. This is an interesting thing to me because of the fact that uh, Global Force Wrestling still does not have a broadcast partner. But they're putting out this content sort of as a way of showing off what they've done so far more than anything. It seems to be kind of a mix of reality programming and behind the scenes stuff and of course in-ring action. My problem with this is the fact that it's been done a little bit before. This was kind of what TNA was doing a few years ago. Um, of course when Jarrett was still involved with the promotion at that point in time. But it's a style that I don't really agree with because here again, you've got a wrestling promotion that seemingly wants to shoot TV 
and do everything with it other than focus on wrestling. It's kind of bizarre to me. And I don't really understand why wrestling has become kind of the, the third wheel, so to speak, in the four-wheel structure that is a professional wrestling promotion um, as far as one that runs TV events. But uh, it, it boggles my mind to think why well, you can't just focus on engaging in-ring action and let that be the star of the show. You've got to have all this backstage stuff and whatnot that ultimately it's going to fade away and it's not going to be that interesting because it's just not how things are anymore. People don't want to see that, at least they don't seem to be indicating they want to see it nowadays. Um, everybody knows that wrestling ratings are kind of sinking as they are. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where this takes them, but I, I don't see it being a functional formula going forward. Here again, I'm a fan of wrestling, not of reality, so we'll see what happens, but it, uh, it did at least good look, it uh, was at least good looking footage, um, it's definitely something they can use to market, um, so we'll see where it goes, and hopefully they'll be able to wind up on a network near us sometime in the coming future. Number two story of the week is our reaction to the NXT TakeOver Respect event. This was fantastic, top to bottom, great show. No real complaints there whatsoever. Um, I've heard a few people say that the Apollo Crews Tyler Breeze match was not really anything to be all that proud of. That uh, they're continuing to push people over Tyler Breeze despite the fact that he's one of the guys on the NXT roster who is definitely ready for the main roster. But uh, right, that's one of those nitpicky type of things. It was an entertaining show from start to finish. Um, it was something that I could watch again right now and still be entertained by. And that's saying something because I've watched it two times since it originally aired. Um, there was a good showing by Scott Dawson and Dash Wilder, two Mid-Atlantic boys. They unfortunately did lose to Finn Balor and Samoa Joe in the semifinals of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. But they should take some solace in the fact that uh, Joe and Finn did go on to win the tournament. So it is what it is there. <laughs> but uh, great show. The main event, of course, was what everyone was talking about. The Iron Woman match, I'm going to go ahead and use that term as opposed to Iron Man, um, was a great match between two women who have really set the women's division in NXT on fire. Um, Bailey looked great. Sasha Banks, of course, is phenomenal in the ring. Um, the story they told was great. It was a well-laid-out match, well-paced, um, logical in terms of the progression that they made. Some people have seen a, a few nitpicks here and there in terms of some of the spots and some of the um, timing of a few things here and there, but overall, great stuff. Fantastic stuff. And I would only hope this is going to continue forward with uh, NXT as a brand. Um, it makes you hope that a lot of these talents will never go anywhere, that they'll just stay on NXT forever because it seems like that's the place to be. Um, and here again, you've got examples of guys who've been brought up to the main roster in the form of Neville and others who they get there, and it's like, well, what do we do with these guys? Look at Seth Rollins, you can do something like that with it maybe. Or just try anything different than what uh, you guys are doing now as far as taking creative talent or taking top talent from NXT, sticking them with creative decisions that are not all that well thought out and removing whatever type of um, momentum they might have had from NXT. So it is what it is. Um, NXT is better than anything else that uh, WWE is creating right now. So um, here again. Great show. Uh, looking forward to the next one. Uh, they've got a lot coming up here soon. They're going to be overseas here um, doing some stuff not to, too far off from where we are right now. And uh, we're going to be in Florida next month. My family and I will be. So I'm hoping to maybe get to an NXT event down there. I don't know if we'll be able to or not, but uh, it definitely is one of the goals that I have for uh, being down there. But uh, here again, uh, Respect was a fantastic show. Looking forward to more from NXT in the future. And the number one story of the week is the state of TNA Wrestling's Heavyweight Championship. <sighs> Notice I had to take a deep cleansing breath there because I'm not even sure that I can explain what's going on right now. Essentially what happened was, at the end of Bound for Glory, Matt Hardy was the TNA World Heavyweight Champion. He then has a legal injunction filed against him by Ethan Carter III, thus taking his ability to compete for TNA away. So he then is more or less left with no choice but to do the honorable thing in dropping the title. He forfeited the belt, so suddenly the belt is vacant, um, and they have to go forward with this tournament structure that they shot weeks or months ago when they were still 
taping uh, live events at the Impact Zone in Universal Studios in Orlando. Um, the whole thing is really a mess, to be honest with you, because you've got guys who are in this tournament who have long since lost their affiliation with TNA. Um, the funny thing is, I keep waiting to have this happen, and it, it, it hasn't happened yet, of course, because there's really been nothing going on for a week, but I think at some point in time there's going to be a situation to where a guy who is working with TNA on these tournament shows that were recorded a long time ago is going to wind up on NXT on the same night. I would not put it past WWE to try to structure it that way because of the fact that it would be one more thing they could say, oh look, TNA goofed up and did this. <laughs> uh, because they've been trolling pretty hard here for a little while and um, it, it would not surprise me at all if that happens. But they're going to have this tournament. Whoever wins the tournament apparently is going to be the uh, overall winner, uh, champion, whatever. Um, like I say, it's a mess. You're relying on stock footage that was shot weeks ago to create this scenario. Um, it is what it is. We'll find out what happens, but I really think it's going to wind up with Ethan Carter being the champion again, so the whole thing's kind of a wash, including Bound for Glory, which you know, you've got your biggest event of the year that you've essentially told fans already that, well, it didn't matter because we just took away the uh, end of the main event. So it is what it is, more TNA as you know. That said, we're at the point in the program where we like to get you guys caught up on what's happening in this part of the world as far as independent events this coming weekend. To our knowledge, there are 12 events that are going to be happening this weekend. We've got a few that aren't pictured, including one that will be held by uh, C4W Explosive Wrestling in Myrtle Beach. They're going to be having an event at the XGM Sports Mall this Saturday. That will be a special uh, fundraiser type event for Tom Trust, who's otherwise known as Charlie Nash. Um, he was recently diagnosed with a advanced stage of testicular cancer and they're um, wanting to show some good faith towards him and his family and hopefully raise some money for him. So if you want some more information on that particular show, you can check out their Facebook page. Also, I believe that uh, we don't have a poster for Underground Independent Wrestling. They'll be having their event this uh, Friday here as well. But let's go ahead and roll those uh, posters and we'll get you caught up and then we'll be back to wrap up the program. folks our rundown of the events that are coming to you this weekend we appreciate you tuning in as always if you are a fan of this particular show go ahead and click that like button that lets us know that you enjoyed it also if you're enjoying what we have on the channel please feel free to go ahead and click subscribe also if you are a wrestler a promoter or in some way involved with the wrestling promotion and you didn't see your poster in the rundown of our weekly events it's because of the fact that we didn't know about it if you would go ahead and drop us a line via YouTube the Facebook page or Twitter be glad to have your poster out there and promote your event because that's what we're about here on Rassel with Redbeard. Here again, we appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you next week.